Hello, in this video for the Cadillac 472-500, I want to talk about the factory camshaft. I just degreed this camshaft and it had a good plastic chain on it. And then I put in a good chain and degreed it again. I set the chain to zero and double checked everything to see what I had. And part of the reason I did that is I have kind of suspected that there was some retard built into the chain. And a test I did almost, it was probably 20 years ago, I really thought I saw it in the chain. But I've gotten better at degreeing cams in all those years. And in checking this particular one, I found that there was no retard built into the chain at all. Now, that doesn't mean it wasn't retarded, but it was retarded because of slop. Now, I'm going to point out some of this. The, uh, this is how you look at a cam at the end of the camshaft. Now, remember, a crankshaft goes around for two turns. Camshafts are actually measured in crankshaft degrees. So because you have two turns, you have 2 times 360, or 720 degrees, in a camshaft. And like I said, this is like looking at the end of the camshaft as opposed to looking at the end of the crank. And the reason I draw it this way is because it helps me see better how the engine's actually going to function. You've got the intake part coming in. You've got compression. You've got when, because this is TDC again at the bottom here. You've got when the cylinder fires, the power stroke, and then the exhaust stroke. And so this lets me see the whole picture. And like I said, it's basically, you, you could actually draw the lobes in here because it's basically like looking at the end of the camshaft. Now, there are other ways to draw camshafts, but when you do it like that graph method and whatnot, that's really talking more about um, ramp and intensity on the, the lobe. That's done for somebody like Billy at, at Comp Cams that designs camshafts. I'm not really getting into that. I'm just trying to basically understand how the camshaft is sitting in there. Somebody else designed the camshaft. In this case, GM. And so I'm just trying to get a good feel that it's in kind of the way I want it to go. So I basically plotted out. I measured using the degree wheel and the, the dial indicator. I measured all of the events on the camshaft at 50 thousandths tappet lift. Now remember, that's the lifter, tappet, lifter. And so that is how you look at cams when you look in a book. You don't look at the gross valve duration. You look at the duration at 50. And that helps put everything being apples and apples. Because a lot of cam manufacturers, I mean like Cadillac, lists the gross duration at one thousandths tappet lift. That's almost nothing. And so that's hard to determine what it is when you're looking at other camshafts. And the same with uh, other cam manufacturers. Some will do six, some will do eight, some will do four. And so that makes the advertised or gross duration a useless number because it's apples to oranges. You, you can't tell one cam from another because they're measuring them different. That's why everybody started having them test them at 50 thousandths tappet lift. And that gives you a good picture from one cam company to another as to how it's working. And once you just start looking at 50 thousandths tappet lift numbers, you can start understanding how it goes. Now, it's not exactly how the cam runs, but it's pretty close. And so, I mean, those other numbers matter, but some of that is the ramp into opening it up. So we just do 50, and that's what I've done. And 
if you look at it, <clears throat> and I know this may be a little hard to see, but intake duration at 50,000, like other cans that you would look at, is actually 200 degrees of duration. That's not a very big can. And it's 207 on the exhaust. Again, not a very big can. The interesting thing about these numbers is even the modern LS motor runs almost this exact same can. GM does very subtle variations of this same can for most stock motors. The only time you got something different is if it was some sort of HO motor or something special that they did a little bit different. Then you can have, then you'll see GM with some other numbers. But the basic stocker driver motors across a lot of years, I mean decades, and across most of the GM family, you know, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, whatnot, all kind of run these same kind of general numbers. And so this cam isn't a lot different. The thing that they do different sometimes, and certainly Cadillac does, is this particular cam, once I put the new chain on it, is actually ground in with six degrees of retard. Now, that retard is in order to help emissions, I would assume, and maybe to make it a little bit smoother. But it doesn't necessarily help them. Now, initially, when I did this, you can see here, maybe see, I, I'm hoping you can see, that the intake center line with the old chain, which had eight degrees of slop. Now, the, the chain, the gear was in really good shape. The chain had a little bit of play. And so I checked to see how much play it is. And that play was eight degrees. And it got confirmed when I put on the new chain, which doesn't have play, because it changed it by four degrees. And so half of the eight, because you're, you're tightening up the chain on both sides, half of the eight is the four degrees that it moved it back. And so without that chain slot, I'm still sitting in at six degrees retarded. And initially, it was on a 125 lobe center for the intake. Now the cam itself has a 115 degree lobe center. That's between the two lobes. You know, the exhaust is 115, the intake is 115. But this is then rotated six more degrees in order to change when the events happen. And so that put with, especially with the chain slot, that put me at 125 intake center line and a 105 exhaust center line. Now remember, I had this motor running on the stand and it actually ran pretty good. Now I expected to see a little bit of slop in the chain. One of the telltale signs of slop in a chain is when you're trying to check the timing and it's kind of bouncing around a little bit. Well, that's because the chain is loading and unloading and whatnot as the, the camshaft goes around and different valves are, are hitting. So, I expected to see a little bit of slop. Eight degrees is probably pretty common on a motor that's seen some miles. A lot of, like I said, stocker engine rebuild guys will throw in a camshaft at four degrees advanced just so that over the life of the motor, that retard that starts creeping in with train chain stretch doesn't put the cam way off from where it should be. And that would have been nice. But even with the new chain, like I said, I've got six degrees of retard. So that drops the, the center line on the intake to 121 and the exhaust up to 109. Now, you can run it that way. I mean, this motor ran, you know, even with the the extra four degrees of retard from the slop, it, it ran okay. But up here, as you go past TDC on the intake cycle, at around 75 degrees or so, uh, depends on the stroke, the uh, 
the piston will hit its peak speed. That point, because the piston is moving the fastest in its cycle, is the time when it's drawing in the most air. And so the better you can have the intake valve open at that peak speed, the better you get a fill at low RPM. That's why people will tell you that advancing a cam will help your low end and retarding a cam helps your high end. Well, the low end is about when that intake valve is opening and how open it is at that 75 degree. And your high RPM is about the intake closing point. And so by advancing the cam, which is rotating it this way, you close the, the intake valve sooner and you open it sooner. So you get a better fill at uh, peak piston speed and you don't lose a little bit. Because remember, we are past TDC at this point. And so at really low RPM, and remember the Caddy is a really low RPM motor, you can start to get it to try and push the exhaust gas up. Now, this cam isn't very big. So this point really isn't very far down. Um, you can run a much bigger cam. Uh, I've had, you know, one of my favorite cams is more like a 230 duration over a 200 duration. Now, camshafts are not super sensitive. A, f a couple degrees, one way or another, isn't going to really change how the cam behaves. You know, you, you got to start going 5, 8, 10 degrees, either more duration or moving before it really has a big impact. Advancing this cam another four degrees. So say, you know, I put a street roller coys chain in this, which I recommend. They're a good chain. You know, those cheap chains may stretch pretty quick. Plus, you get that advanced key. So you could run another four degrees in advance on this stock cam when you throw in the chain, and it will just move back a little bit. You'll be like, Instead of opening at 19 degrees, it'll be opening at 15 degrees. And that's not a lot, but it'll lower peak RPM by a couple hundred RPM. And if you're just driving it, which I assume because you're running a stock camshaft, well, then it'll help out because low end is really what you want. And closing this valve sooner may cost you a little bit at a high end horsepower, but you're not going to lose a lot and you're not going to be up there long if you're driving. So, especially with a little cam like this, I don't worry about the, the intake closing and the RPM. Now, if you want more power, you've got to start looking at a bigger cam. And, and one of the things that I like to say is, I mean, work in 20s, but, you know, you don't want to just go from a 200 duration to a 205 duration. I mean, that's almost no change at all. It's basically a stock cam. You know, even if you jump up to 215 duration on the intake, that's still not a big jump. I mean, that's still going to be a very mild cam. And so you got to think about what you're doing. Like I said, I ran a 230 on several motors. Uh, it was a crane cam, and it actually was pretty well behaved. And that started to get to the point of where you could really notice the cam, especially if you idled it down, you know. But like I said, if you're looking at a cam, don't don't split hairs. Look at bigger numbers, and and cams get big. I mean, you start getting into big cams, you're talking, you know, 256 duration at 50, or 264 duration at 50. Uh, one of the cams I ran with Richard Older was 248 at 50. Now that starts making a bigger difference on your upper horsepower because you're starting. 
getting in further down here at the bottom, at the closing point of the intake. Now, the next thing I want to talk about lobe center, if you're looking at other cans. Now, like I said, the one of the things that really helps, low RPM especially, is that fill point at 75 degrees. And you want to keep going at trying to make that. Now, this, like I said, this cam is ground on 115. Now, you'll find cams ground, comp is has a habit of grinding on 110. And, you know, some of the the uh, cams that uh, CADCO does are on, you know, 104 or 106 or 108. Now, by moving that this way, what you're doing is you're opening that, that intake valve sooner and getting a better fill at that 75 degrees. And that helps the motor run better at low and mid range, which is on most of these cars is where you're going to be spending your time anyway. And that is important even if you start getting into high RPM. High RPM isn't always about the closing point. You have to have a good fill going. In other words, the cylinder needs to be filling up at the beginning of the camshaft cycle or by the time you get down to this closing point, all it's doing is still trying to catch up. You're not getting to the point where you're actually ramming in extra air. And so if that's why a lot of times people tell you wide load centers really don't help. Well, that hurts the initial fill and that later opening doesn't help your high end because your initial fill isn't good. So the only time a wider lobe center will work out better is if the duration is a lot higher. And so when you're looking at cams, if you start looking at, you know, a, a 230 or a 240 duration cam, you might look at one that maybe has a little wider lobe separation. And what that does is eliminate overlap. If you look in stock camshaft here, there is no overlap at all at 50. And for the most part, that's a really good thing for idle quality and for, for very low RPM. Now, as you gain more overlap, that is where you get the low for chop that some guys really like the sound of. So when you look at the thumper cam, you'll see that it has extra exhaust duration and it's trying to basically contaminate the incoming charge during idle so that it has that bad idle because a low per chop is actually a misfire. And so that's one other thing, if that's your goal that to have it sound like that, is you start looking at overlap. Now, if the overlap gets too big, then it starts cutting further and further into the low RPM part of the motor. It doesn't clear up. It's forcing too much exhaust gas up until later in the RPM. And that's when you start getting camshaft moving up in RPM because the low per RPM is damaged by the overlap of the camshaft. And for the most part, like I said, the caddy is a little different critter. You know, on a small block Chevy, you throw in some gear, you throw in a bigger converter, and you're good to go. But on a caddy, especially if you're just running iron heads, the goal at first is to get the cylinder to fill up. And so you got to pay attention to what you're doing on selecting a camshaft. Um, I have run that cam I was talking about. It was all the way over here with an intake opening prior to TDC. Now, that's the next thing I want to talk about. If you start doing that, these are open chamber heads. So I have an extra 200,000 before I get to the piston. Now, if you're running the early heads that are closed chamber, the valve is basically almost right at the piston. So unless you have put in a piston that actually has a valve relief, you may not have room to have the intake opening from this side. And you may not necessarily have room for the exhaust to be closing on this side. So you got to pay attention to that. 
And if you're running a cam like that, you may need to double check your clearance in order to make sure you don't have that you have room and things aren't going to hit. So getting back to the stock cam, you know, if we get away from the the higher duration cams, if you're just running this, I'm probably going to pull this gear back off and go to the advanced key because a little bit more advanced is a better choice, especially for this small of a camp. But it's also why I say a lot of times that you should run probably a little bit bigger camp. If you're really trying to get even just a little bit more out of the motor, you know, going up to a 215 or a 224 cam at 50 is going to help the breathing. That extra duration is going to help out. So that's one thing to consider when you're looking at camshafts. Now, technically, I could probably advance this even further than four degrees, and I might consider it. Um, I've always been curious how it will run. The problem is, of course, it's going to keep sucking this closing point further up into the cycle. But like I said, we have run cams. I mean, uh, CAD Company did one motor that the intake center line was like 102 and they had some really slow end power. And so that really shows that this is the event you need to look at if you're really talking about torque, especially on a Cadillac that's underfed. Now, on a lot of the stuff you read about camshafts are really talking about the small block Chevy. And the small block Chevy is fairly decent breathing for the size of the motor. The Cadillac is not. We have small block Chevy breathing, but a 500 cubic inch motor. So as you start getting into camshafts, you'll find out that the Cadillac will take a lot more camshafts than somebody will tell you for a small block Chevy. And so don't read the small block Chevy stuff and necessarily think it applies to this motor. Um, you can run more cam. Like I said, I, I didn't even start, and I had to kind of idle it down. I didn't even start getting any kind of change in idle until I was up to 230 of duration, degrees of duration, on the intake cycle. And I was sitting a bit advanced. And so it, it's really something to, to think about. And it gives you the information that you know, stock cam is 200 degrees. So with that information, you can go out and look at cams and make a decent choice about what you want to run. And you've always got CADCO to kind of help along. They put enough cams in the motor to, to know where it goes. Uh, the other thing to remember, if you're running stock rocker arms, now if you look, this doesn't have a lot of load lift. To run stock rocker arms, you have to run a fairly mellow cam. And it's not about duration, it's about ramp speed, it's about spring pressure. Now remember, we put V28 springs in this, I added just a little bit of spring pressure. But you can't just run the ramp speed up. Now ramp speed is how quick the lifter moves off of the base circle of the cam how quickly it's opening up. And because it moves this event, because it's happening quicker, it does help in power, but it's harder on the valve train. And so because the stock rockers are pretty mellow, you have to buy a cam that has a slower ramp and will work with that. And CAD Company has some camshafts specifically designed to run with stock rockers. That's one of the reasons, and unfortunately they're gone, I like some of the crane cam ones, is because I could get loads with a little softer ramp speed and I could run my stock rockers. I did not have to go to some other rocker and add more expense to the motor. And that's true of this. I'm gonna have to pick a cam, because eventually I would like to put a cam in these. I'm gonna have to pick a cam that will work with the stock rockers and not give me trouble. And so 
that's one thing that I have to debate. But for right now, I'm just going to run this stock cam just a little bit more advanced. I mean, if you look, six degrees are retarded. If I put it in the four degree cam box, it's still going to be sitting two degrees retarded. So it's not like it's even in there advanced. And so anyway, that should make it run a little better. That's part of the reason I tell guys that just putting a timing chain in usually makes these motors run better because between the chain stretch and, you know, if your gear is, is all chewed up because the plastic's gone on it, just think of how retarded that cam's running. I mean, if the motor ran at all, you're surprised because, you know, it could be sitting even 10, 12, 14 degrees more retarded from the gear disintegrating. So putting in a timing chain alone will make it run better. And I would kind of recommend if you're running this stock cam, not changing out stuff, to probably run that four degrees advanced. Um, that should help it on the bottom end. You're not going to have a lot of upper end because it's just a little bitty cam and it's a really big motor. So anyway, that's what I found. And I was happy to, to test this one because, like I said, it's been a couple of decades since I've had a chance to do one. And this had a good chain. My, or the chain was a little stretched. But this had a good gear and let me really see it. Plus, I've gotten better at, at doing all this kind of stuff. So, like I said, stock camshaft is 200 degrees of duration on the intake, 207 degrees of duration on the exhaust. Um, it's only like 266 lobe lift on the exhaust side and 261 lobe lift on the intake side. So it is not a very big cam. And that's basically what the motor was designed for. And so that's how it goes. So I wish you luck with all your stuff. And I think that's going to be it for this video. If there's any questions, if I've confused you, if there's some side note you want to know, put it in the comments. And I might have to do a part two to this and see how it goes. Um, I understand this stuff is a little complicated, but that should give you a general idea of how some of this stuff goes so you can make some little better decisions on your engine and how you want it to run. So that's it. Have a good day and hope things go well.